Hi, everybody. It's Deborah from PeopleLovingAnimals.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching my videos today. Today's video is kind of a funny topic, but it's a really serious health issue for dogs. Um, so I actually ended up doing a, quite a thorough article for my website, PeopleLovingAnimals.com, on this topic. Uh, and the video will be quite lengthy as well. Um, I originally wanted to do a video about what can you feed your dog when he has diarrhea and but then when I was researching the topic I found out more and more and more stuff and I thought there's like four or five things that we really need to cover if you're having a problem with your dog having diarrhea. So today's video is called Dog Diarrhea Treatment, What to Give Dogs with Diarrhea. But in the video we are going to cover um, some of the um, well, first of all, what, what you can feed your dog when he has diarrhea. We're going to cover some of the um, common causes of diarrhea. And if you know some of the causes, then you can also do some prevention. We're going to talk about when it's time to take your dog to the vet. At what point, you know, is it serious and you need to call the vet? <clears throat> Excuse me. We're also going to talk about some products that can help with diarrhea. And we're also going to talk about um, how to clean diarrhea out of the carpet. <laughs> Oh, that's like a, the worst thing. Um, anyway, I do have a lot of personal experience about, uh, with this and a lot of things that I can share with you that you'll find out uh, in this video. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Put me on pause if you need to and go get a cup of coffee and sit down because we're going to talk about diarrhea for a while, but you're going to you're gonna know so much really valuable stuff by the time we're done with this video. If you have not been here before, my name is Deborah. I own a website called PeopleLovingAnimals.com. We're on my website today. We're going to use the article that I'm that I just mentioned to do the the video today, so we can cover everything step by step. I'm going to give you the link to this article in the description box of this video. Okay, so if you um want to cover a specific point, if you want to go and read this whole article, if you want to click on anything in the article, all that sort of stuff, I'm going to give you this article in the description box so you can just relax and you don't have to try to write things down or anything. Um, also, anything that we talk about in the video, I'll give you a link to. Okay, so like I said, just relax. Everything you need um, or that you're going to uh, want to um, check into Everything will be in the description box, okay? Also, um, if you are not already su a subscriber to this YouTube channel, I would love it so much if you would subscribe. Um, and if you are, I appreciate so much that you are a subscriber. I'm trying to build my channel, and it is building slowly but surely. And if this uh, video is valuable today, I would appreciate it if you would give it a like. That really helps YouTubers. And please Share this video um, with anyone that you know who has a dog who has a tendency to have diarrhea because it's a very serious health issue and uh, this video is going to provide really valuable information that will help them. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Um, oh. What to give dogs with diarrhea? Um, diarrhea is a fairly common condition um, in dogs. It varies in intensity, duration, and frequency depending on the dog. Um, it may be impossible to totally prevent diarrhea for your dog, but knowing as much as possible about dog diarrhea treatment um, will help limit the frequency of it. You can you know, start to prevent it from happening and it'll help to reduce the duration of it. And if you know the things that we're going to be talking about today's video, it's going to reduce the health risk uh, to your dog. Uh, learning to what to give dogs with diarrhea, knowing the common causes for diarrhea in dogs, knowing when to seek med uh, medical attention. Uh, these are the best bet for your pet's health, okay? Now, here's my boy Cagney. If you've been on my YouTube channel before, you've heard about him. He's a Boston Terrier named Cagney. Sadly, I lost Cagney in 2018, but I was blessed to be his mom for a while. Um, I had a Boston Terrier named Cagney, and he had a ton of digestive, uh, di digestive issues, and unfortunately, he experienced diarrhea fairly often. So I've been around this block a few times. Um, I've been a pet owner for many years, so obviously, I've, I've had um, pets with diarrhea uh, lots of times, but with Cagney, it was, it was pretty intense, and it happened um, fairly often. Um, so I'm going to give you a list here of what I gave Cagney as far as food. Um, while he, when he had his um, bouts with diarrhea and what he would tolerate. And I'm also going to include a list of other things uh, that are recommended by um, 
by the professionals for what is a good thing to give to feed your dog when he has diarrhea. But first, I want to talk about fasting. Um, several years ago, I had a miniature dachshund. Um, if you've been here before, you know I had a miniature dachshund named Taz. This was before Taz, years before Taz. I had a, another miniature dachshund named Maggie. And one time she had diarrhea. And I got nervous because it had been going on and, you know, I just, I just felt bad. And so I took her to the vet and the first thing he said was stop feeding her. And I was like, what do you mean stop feeding her? And he says, nothing in, nothing out. That's what he said. Uh, now, a lot of veterinarians will recommend withholding food for 12 to 24 hours while providing water in small amounts frequently to allow the dog's digestive system to settle down and clear whatever caused the diarrhea. Okay, it's probably good advice. And for a young, healthy dog, they can certainly go 12 to 24 hours without a bowl of food as long as they're getting water. Um, but you do have to be careful with this because dehydration can be a very serious consequence consequence of having uh, dog diarrhea. Um, so please remember when my vet made that recommendation, he made that recommendation, number one, on a dog that he knew about. He was Maggie's veterinarian. So he knew her age. He knew her health conditions. He knew everything about her. Plus the dog was literally in his hands while he was making the recommendation. So he had done an examination. Okay. So you can't just take that, that, oh, a vet says to wait 12 or 24 hours to feed them. It depends. Okay. Um, for example, um, puppies and elderly dogs need nutri nutrients. Um, fasting may not be safe for an elderly dog. It may not be safe for a small dog who doesn't have a lot of fat reserves. It may not be safe for dogs who have any sort of medical dish, uh, condition. Um, you must provide the dog with sufficient hydration and nutrients. I personally never did fasting with Cagney. Cagney was elderly. He had several health conditions. He had all this stuff. So I did, never did fasting with him. I, I gave him things that were uh, okay for him to have while he was having diarrhea. Um, and I'm going to go over that list now of what, what I went, um, uh, what I did for him. So I just wanted to go over fasting, um, just so that you have a good, healthy understanding of that. Okay. Um, what to feed your dog with diarrhea. Now, here's a list of what I gave Cagney and what he would tolerate. E electrolyte water. Um, I personally think this is the most important thing because as a dog starts having diarrhea, he's at risk of dehydration. We all are if we have diarrhea. You've got to keep water in because it, it will dehydrate you. And dehydration can have a whole lot of health issues. It's a very serious thing. So simply replace the water in his bowl with um, electrolyte water. I'm going to give you a link here. Like I said, every Everything that's in this article, it's going to be linked in the description box as well. I'm going to give you a link for Propel Unflavored Electrolyte Water. That's what I gave Cagney. And I'm also going to give you a link for Unflavored Pedialyte. Okay, now here's the trick. Take out their regular water, dump it out, and put in the electrical light, the, the electrolyte electrolyte water, but make sure they're drinking it. Okay. I personally did not like this propel water. I think it had like a thick, I didn't really like it myself. So I'm just saying, make sure the dog's going to drink it. Okay. So they're better off with the tap water. If they won't drink the Pedialyte or if they won't drink this, um, electrolyte water, it would be better for them if they would, but their regular tap water, whatever they normally drink, is is better than them not drinking. So if you replace the water in their bowl with the electrolyte water, please make sure they're drinking it, okay? But that is the most important thing, I think. I think it's the best, easiest way you can um, do for them because even if they won't eat anything, because if they're really having an upset stomach, they may refuse to eat entirely. And if you can get the electrolyte water into them, at least you're giving them a little bit of a boost, uh, baby food. Baby food was fantastic with Cagney. Um, he liked it. Um, chicken, chicken and turkey flavor were his favorites. I'm giving you a link to these um, to get um, on Amazon. Just, you know, chicken flavor, turkey flavor. Um, that was often the only thing that Cagney would eat. Um, sometimes, you know, like I say, he had bouts with diarrhea often, and sometimes he would eat, no matter what I gave him, sometimes he was picky, sometimes he would only drink water. Baby food was one of the few things that he would eat um, when he wouldn't eat anything else. And obviously, baby food is very healthy and full of nutrients and so forth. So that's uh, one thing that I gave him. The other is skinless chicken breast. Uh, just boil it. Um, don't use any oil, butter, spices, uh, no skin on it. And what I did was I chopped this up in my food processor, 
processor. You could just chop it up in pieces with a knife. And I mixed it into whatever I wanted him to eat. So there's going to be some things on this list. And whatever I wanted him to eat, I just sprinkle some of those chicken chunks on top. And that would usually get him to eat it, okay? Even if you're trying to get him to eat baby food, if he doesn't like it, sprinkle a little chicken breast on it. Might might entice him, okay? Now, um, you can mix that chicken breast in with rice or pasta. Rice or pasta, bland, just boiled, is recommended by most vets is something that you can give um, to the dog when they have diarrhea. But you may want to mix in some of the baby food um, to entice them because as you can see in this picture right here, of Cagney, this was a bowl. He had diarrhea. This was a bowl that I put boiled pasta in and I mixed some chicken in, right? So I'm thinking, oh, I'm golden. The dog's going to eat this bowl of food. I come back and this is what I find. <laughs> he had pulled out all the chicken chunks and he had put all the pasta on the floor and he wouldn't eat the pasta. So that's how I learned the trick. Put the pasta in the bowl, put the little chicken chunks on it, but then put a little teaspoon of the baby food in and mix that around. See, then it's all coated and now the pasta tastes good because it's coated with the chicken flavor baby food. You see what I mean? So that's just one of the tricks to get that whole bowl of food in them. Um, but I just thought it was funny. I took that picture and I said, what, what are you doing? <laughs> it's so funny. Some of the tricks we got to play with our um, animals to get them to eat. Um, bananas. Uh, bananas are rich in potassium. They're um, an important, it, which is an important electrolyte that can become depleted during bouts of diarrhea or vomiting. The recommendation is about one teaspoon of mashed um I would say mashed potatoes, one teaspoon of mashed banana per 10 pounds of body weight. I personally gave Cagney the baby food, bananas, little Gerber jar. That's what I gave him. And he liked it. Okay. Again, if you want him to have the bananas for the potassium and the um, electrolytes and you give him the little banana chunks or banana baby food and he turns his nose up, try putting a couple little chicken bits on it. Might might get him to eat the banana. Canned pumpkin. Um, I had found out this. Well, you know what? I'll tell you how I found out about this. This boy, Cagney, uh, we le lived next door to a pretty little beagle named Faith. Well, Cagney had a big crush on Faith. It was very sweet. But the two of them, there was like a picket fence between our two yards. But they could um, get around the fence and they would, you know, come over to each other's yards and stuff. And plus, they could reach in between the fence. Well, me and the neighbor later discovered that Cagney and Faith had a romantic dinner where they split a dead bird. I know it's disgusting, but the two of them ate the dead bird. Now, usually a dog has a digestive system strong enough that they can tolerate eating a dead bird, okay? But who knows if the bird had some kind of parasite or anything. Both Cagney and the little beagle named Faith were both elderly dogs. They both had underlying health conditions. No matter what, it made them both sick. So they both had diarrhea at the same time. And it was my neighbor that told me to give Cagney canned pumpkin. And then I later found out um, that canned pumpkin is strangely effective uh, for diarrhea and constipation. Now, the trick is with canned pumpkin, make sure you get just plain pumpkin. Don't get prepared pie filling, okay? Because a can of pumpkin pie filling, that's going to have sugar. It's going to have all kinds of crap in it. Just plain pumpkin. And I'm giving you a link to get that, okay? You may want to just grab a can of that and keep it in your cupboard if your dog ever does have um, diarrhea. And then you've got it on hand as something you can quickly start giving him to, to help with it right away. Okay. Now, the canned pumpkin, Cagney did like it. Cagney did like it. And again, if you're trying to get your dog to eat it, if he doesn't want to, try a little of those uh the, the chicken breast on top mixed in might might do the trick. Yogurt, um, unless they can't tolerate um, milk or milk products, then uh, yogurt is a good idea. Um, it's got a lot of nutrients and it's uh, yogurt is just basically good for dogs. Um, Cagney loved yogurt. I got him just a plain white unflavored yogurt, which I personally find disgusting. He liked it. Um, and by the way, a little if your dog likes yogurt, just plain yogurt because you don't want him to have all the sugar and flavor. 
flavors and everything, just plain yogurt. If your dog does like yogurt, it's a great way to get medicine in them. Now, the whole time that I was taking care of Cagney, Cagney was also um, suffering with congestive heart failure. So he had like three different medications. He had to take um, a water pill. He had all these things. And you know, if you had a dog, it's hard after a while to figure out ways to get them to take their medicine. And the yogurt worked great. I would just put a, a pill, whatever pill he had to take on a plate, I would put a teaspoon of yogurt on it. One lick, one lick, he would lick that yogurt and down goes the pill. So it's just a, a little tip for me. If you've got a dog that uh, needs medication and if they like yogurt, you know, now, those were the things that I gave Cagney that Cagney would uh, tolerate for the most part. But here's some other ideas uh, that I got with my research. Unsweetened applesauce. Um, as with banana, give about one teaspoon per um, 10 pounds of body weight. Um, again, unsweetened. You don't want to be giving them the sugar. Um, Over-the-counter medications like Pepto-Bismol or products for dog diarrhea like Metro... Nizadol, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, may also be effective for dog diarrhea, but it should be given with caution and only under a vet's recommendation and approval, okay? Don't just give this stuff to your dog without checking for your vet first. Now, I'm going to give you a link to Pepto-Bismol. I'm going to give you a link to purchase the Metrazidol, I don't even know how to say it, on vetapprovedrx.com. Um, There's a video on this YouTube channel um, and also a, a review on my website about vetapprovedrx.com. I cannot say enough good things about them. Um, they ended up being the cheapest place over and over and over and over again of the medications. So Cagney's medication for his heart um, condition were very expensive. And before him, I had the dachshund named Taz who had uh, Cushing's disease and the medicine for Cushing disease, Cushing's disease is anywhere at that time. And that was years ago. It was between 75 and $90 a month. I found that vetapprovedrx.com was not only the best price always, I would always research and I would always find them to be the best price, but they were the best customer service. And I'd love to tell you more, but I'm not going to take your time in this video. Go to my um, YouTube channel and find the video for this, the best place to buy uh, pet medications. And um, I'll try to remember to link it here too in the in the description box. And it gives a whole review and the really positive experiences I had with them, um, where they they really cared about my pets and and they gave over and above customer service. But anyway, so I'm giving you the link to them if you decide to get these products. But I want you to make sure you check with your vet first. Now let me tell you another little funny story about the Pepto Bismol. That same little dog, Maggie, that little dachshund that I told you, I took her to the vet, the one that the, doc, the dog said, stop feeding her, nothing in, nothing out. During that same vet visit, he said, uh, I think you should try giving her Pepto-Bismol, just about a teaspoon of Pepto-Bismol. So I looked at him, I'm like, how do you give a dog Pepto-Bismol, you know, with a kid, you know, you put on a teaspoon and you give it to the kid. How do you give, I'm not, she's not going to lick Pepto-Bismol off a spoon. She's not going to like it, you know. So he said, take the Pepto-Bismol on your finger, wipe it across her lips quickly. Just wipe it across her lip. She's going to lick it. She takes the Pepto-Bismol. I said, oh, my God, you're brilliant. So he told me to give her a teaspoon, I don't know, like twice a day for three days or something. Don't take that as a recommendation. And, again, don't take this as a recommendation from me. Ask your vet before you do it. But whatever he told me to give her, first two or three times it worked okay. I kind of snuck up behind her, wiped the Pepto on her lips, and she ate it. Well, guess what? Several times in, she bit me. That was the only time in the whole 11 years that I bit that dog that she was ever aggressive or that I owned that dog that she was ever aggressive with me. And she bit down on my middle finger. And I am telling you, a little miniature dachshund, she bit down on this finger. It felt like I had slammed it in a car door. That's how much it hurt. Now, luckily, she didn't break it. She didn't break the skin or anything. And I stopped trying to give her the Pepto. But keep in mind, whatever you're doing with your dog... Um, during a bout of diarrhea or whatever, you're trying to feed him stuff, you're trying to give him medication, you're trying to do this. Keep in mind, if the dog has diarrhea, he probably doesn't feel good, okay? They're going to be more irritable. They're going to be less able to tolerate you, okay? So, again, if your vet says it's okay to give the Pepto-Bismol, try it, but just keep that in mind um, with your dog, no matter what you're doing with them. If, if they don't feel good, they're going to be less tolerant. Okay. So just please try to respect that. Okay. Another uh, thing you can give them is white potatoes boiled without the skin. Um, 
Again, a little, little bit of potato, a little bit of chicken mixed in. Maybe you can get them to eat that. Uh, Low-fat cottage cheese, um, that is high in protein. Again, if they can tolerate those sorts of products. Um, an egg uh, prepared with no butter or oil. Um, you know, you can boil an egg, hard-boiled egg, and just chop it up on a plate for the dog if he'll eat it. Um now, uh, just as an aside, I just wanted to share this with you because, like I've mentioned, um, Cagney, uh, my Boston, he had a lot of digestive issues. And I, I had him, I think, for about, I think it was three years altogether. Um, maybe it was two. I'm not sure. But I had him for a while. But I found that giving Cagney vegetables is a major part of his diet really helped with his digestive problems. Um, he had terrible, terrible gas. He had diarrhea. Um he had all these things, and I found that giving him vegetables um, as part of his diet. Now, first of all, he was on a prescription dog food that the vet gave him to help with his digestive problems, so I definitely suggest talking with your vet about that option if your dog does have these sorts of issues. Um, but what I would do is I would cut up a small tomato and put it on a plate for him every day. Cagney loved it. I gave him a tomato for lunch every day, just a little tomato, cut it up on a plate. He loved it. Um, he also, I also would just buy him frozen vegetables because you have to be care careful with canned vegetables because they tend to have a lot of added sodium, which is not good, especially if you have an older dog like I did with a heart condition. Okay, so I chose the frozen vegetables, and of course, fresh is uh, is ideal. Um, I gave him peas and carrots; that was one of his favorites. Um, green beans instead of milk bones or treats. I would crunch up baby carrots for him. Um, be careful not to hand a baby carrot to a dog because they're the perfect size to get stuck in a dog's throat and cause choking. So I would um, chop up the baby carrot into little pieces and give it to him. That's a great way if you're trying to get your dog to lose weight to give vegetables. I have a whole video about how to help your dog lose weight um, where I recommend this. Dogs love vegetables. Um, you can get a little broccoli fl floret, um, blueberries. I used to, my little dachshund named Taz, she loved blueberries. I would keep a little dish of blueberries in the fridge and instead of giving her a milk bone and spending money on all these store-bought treats which usually are terrible by the way they usually have terrible ingredients in them that are not good for your dog you know reach in the fridge and pick out a little carrot or a little um blueberry or a little broccoli piece and give it to them for one thing they love vegetables they're happy for another thing they're just happy to be getting something um, second or thirdly, they think it's cool. It got, it came out of the fridge, you know, so I don't know, it makes the dog happy. It's good. But I just wanted to share that with you because, um, uh, he had a lot of severe digestive issues and I found he was much improved when I started giving him vegetables on a regular basis. Okay. So that's just an aside that hopefully will help you. Here's Cagney asleep on his blanket. He always used to tuck his little feet in under his face. I have, I could tell you, I probably have at least 25 pictures of him and close-ups of his little face and stuff. He was such a sweet boy. That was his favorite blue blanket. I still have it. Oh, don't we suffer so when we lose them? Uh, anyway, common causes for diarrhea in dogs. According to the AKC, the American Kennel Club, I'm giving you a link to them. These are the most common causes of um, diarrhea in dogs. Number one is eating something they shouldn't. If they get into the garbage, if they eat spoiled food, if they eat something from the yard like a dead bird or something while they're out on the walk. Um, my little dachshund, Taz, oh my God, she would find everything. One time on a walk, she found a half a bagel. <laughs> Another time in a park, she found a half an English muffin. Like, where does this come from? I guess it just blows out of people's garbage bags. Yeah, I don't know. But she was, she would always find stuff, always. Um, and you don't know how long that, that thing has been sitting there and Ugh, you don't know, you know. Anyway, uh, the second thing is a change in diet made too quickly. Um, if you need to change your dog's do dog food, first of all, you shouldn't be doing it often, okay? It's really, it can be really upsetting to their digestive system. By the way, there's somebody coming along in my, um, near my house here with a weed whacker. So I hope that doesn't interrupt our video. Um, but it is, it's not wise to change their food often because it does upset their digestive system. But if you have to change their food, do it slowly. And the way you do that is you start adding the new food into their bowl. Okay. Say if you give your dog one cup of dog food, um, make it three quarters of a cup of their regular dog food and a quarter cup of the new Okay, do that for a couple days, then a few days in, make it half and half, and then a few days in. Do you know what I mean? Like each day, add a little more of the new food 
food with a little less of the old food until you transition, I would say over about a week's time to the new food. You need to be doing it gradual, gradually, okay? Um, it can be caused by food intolerance, allergies, uh, parasites such as roundworms or hookworms, poisonous subst substances or plants. I'm, I am going to give you a link to my article, Foods That Are Poisonous for Dogs and Cats. When I sat down to write that article, I thought I was Miss Smarty Pants and knew them all. I didn't. There was a lot more that I did not know were toxic to dogs and cats. So I highly recommend that you read that article and share it with your friends, please, uh, your friends who have dogs and cats. Um, the seventh common cause for diarrhea is swallowing something that's indigestible, such as a toy, or if you have a large dog, something like the entire kitchen rug. I knew somebody once, they had a full-size golden Labrador retriever. They came home, the dog had eaten the kitchen rug, which by the way, that's a sign of dog separation anxiety. And I, I have, um, I have um, a video about that as well. It's a, it's a very serious issue if your dog is like eating stuff when you're at work. Okay, so just keep that in mind. But anyway, I want to tell you this little story. I once sat in the waiting room of um, my vet's office. I was there with Cagney, but I was in the waiting room and there was a family. And um, their little Jack Russell Terrier, if you don't know what kind of breed that is, if you know the show Frasier, the little dog Eddie, that's a Jack Russell Terrier. Their little Jack Russell Terrier was in surgery. And so I was in the waiting room with them they were waiting and it turns out the dog had swallowed an eraser you know a full-size eraser and had to have surgery to have it removed okay first of all that could have been fatal for the dog he may not have been able to survive it they may have had to put the dog down if the family couldn't afford surgery also i'm guessing that surgery cost between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars from the time they diagnose the dog do the x-ray they see the thing they prep the dog um, they do the surgery, the follow-up, the antibiotics, everything. I'm guessing it was between 1000 and 1500 for that. Um, so that uh, I'm also going to give you a link here in this article for um, called, Is Pet Insurance Worth It for Dogs? Yeah, it is. Okay, there's just a million and one reasons. Again, there's a video. I'm going to give you the link about pet insurance um, because there's just stuff that can happen. But anyway, so, you know, they could have swallowed something, um, that they shouldn't have swallowed. Infections like um, parvovirus or distemper. There's a little interrupt in my, I'm sorry to interrupt the video, but it's in my article here. To subscribe to my mailing list, I'm also going to give you a, um, a link in the description box. I have a dog lover's email list and I also have a cat lover's email list. You can subscribe to both if you want to, uh, but if you subscribe, you'll get a free, free pet training manual. And uh, then about once a week or so, you'll get a, um, an email from peoplelovinganimals.com and it'll have either an article or a blog post or a video all about cats or dogs, depending on which list you're on. Uh, so feel free to go to this article. You can sign up for both if you want to. Also, the links will be in the description box. Um, number nine, bacterial infections like Sam. Sam Salmonella, can't speak. Uh, illnesses such as kidney and liver disease, colitis, inflammatory bowel disease, and cancer. Number 11, antibiotics and other medications. Um, number 12 is a stress or emotional upset. You know, be aware that um, stress can cause a lot of issues for your pet. Um, that we just don't realize things like fighting among family members in the house, loud noises, house repairs of any kind, the arrival of a new uh, pet or a baby, um, even company visiting, um, not to mention major changes like if you have moved. OK, so if your dog is having diarrhea, think about what might be going on. You know, think about what might be going on and if the dog is stressed out because that can that can cause diarrhea. I am going to refer you to this article from the American Kennel uh, Corp. I, I can't speak. The AKC <laughs> called a survivor guide for dog diarrhea. They give much more um, detailed information. And like I said, um, I'm happy to give you this information and I'm going to um, always assure you that the um, information that I give on my videos and in my articles, I get from credible credible resources, but always check with your vet and go with um, the professionals when you're getting advice. Okay. So I'm recommending them to you. Go ahead and go to that article and get a lot more information. 
All right, when to seek medical attention for dog's diarrhea. Um, this can depend on uh, what is normal for your dog. Um, some dogs are more prone to digestive disorders, like Cagney. He had uh, diarrhea on a regular basis. I didn't rush to call the vet every time, although several times I did end up calling the vet for some of the reasons that I'm going to show here. Um, so you have to use your own judgment as to what is normal for your dog um, versus what is unusual. Here's a few suggestions of what to look for when you're deciding whether or not you should take your dog to the vet or if you should just call the vet about this diarrhea, okay? Number one, if the diarrhea does not stop despite home remedies, okay? If you think it's going on too long, you're probably right. Okay. Number two, other symptoms like fever, lethargy, vomiting, or weakness. Number three, dehydration. Um, according to the Pet MD article called Dehydration in Dogs, I'm giving you the link to that article. The most common system of, uh, symptom of dehydration is the loss of elasticity in the skin. Um, I talk about this here in the article, but I'll show you here. If you look at me down here in the corner, you can check it on humans as well. Um, it's easier on short hair dogs, obviously, but if you pull your arm up like this and you give it a pinch, your skin should go right flat down. It should go right back down. If you pinch your skin and it stays up crinkly, you're dehydrated. Do you see? There's no elasticity in the skin. It's, it's okay. So if you have a short haired dog, that's a good way to test it. If you have a long haired dog, that's obviously not very um, easy to check. Um, also, dogs can get dry, tacky, or pale gums. Instead of being pink, their gums are white. Um, their spit gets thick. I know that's gross, but that's kind of what it's like. That's another sign. Um, with advanced dehydration, their eyes will sink in, and they could collapse with shock. Um, so dehydration is very serious. It's serious with people. Um, it's extremely serious in dogs and it's extremely serious in cats as well. So always err on the side of caution and call your vet if your dog won't take food or water while they have diarrhea and if, if the diarrhea is going on too long. You should call your vet if your dog has diarrhea and he's also using medication. Like, for example, if your dog just started taking antibiotics for something else and now all of a sudden he has diarrhea, you should call your vet because he might be having a reaction to whatever this medicine is. So you don't, obviously, you don't want to keep giving the medicine if it's causing the dog to have diarrhea. And number five, existing medical conditions. If your dog has an existing condition such as Cushing's disease, cancer, diabetes, if the dog is elderly, get the vet involved at the onset of diarrhea. That's probably wise. Um, most importantly, it's always time to call the vet when things just don't seem right. Uh, you know your dog. Follow your instincts and give the vet a call if you're concerned. Just leave it at this. If you think, eh, maybe, maybe I need to call the vet, you probably should, okay? All right, here we're getting down to the dirty part. How to clean up dog diarrhea from the carpet. Oh, it's so disgusting. Um, now, this is uh, obviously, if you have a dog with diarrhea and you have carpet, this can be a huge issue, um, even just on the regular hardwood floors or laminate or whatever. Now, I used to put out towels in a blanket. Here's Cagney. This is an actual picture of Cagney during one of his bouts with but excuse me with vi diarrhea they get very tired and so here he is Aww. but that's one of his big blankets and so i would cover the living room floor with that and i would put towels around and stuff because i thought you know if the dog's got diarrhea and i hate to be gross but you know when your dog has diarrhea they can like go poop out in the yard and it still can be dripping from them you know what i mean it kind of comes out a little bit of time it's kind of impossible to keep their fanny clean it's gross you know it's like it's hard to stay up on you know so um so i would cover the floor with towels and in this blanket because obviously it's a lot easier to clean diarrhea off a towel and throw it in the wash than it is to clean it out of the carpet so i would recommend putting an old blanket down towels whatever um and if they have diarrhea um you know, to help cover your carpet. Uh, but if, um, in spite of that, you do end up with the dog 
having diarrhea on the carpet. Here's the steps to clean it up, okay? Step number one, redo, remove the diarrhea with paper towels. Cover the area with paper towels first. Let it sit for a few minutes and let the paper towels soak up as much of the moisture as possible. And then a few minutes later, just scoop it up with the, the diarrhea in the paper towels. Don't rub the carpet. That's just going to make the stain worse. So just get a little garbage can or a plastic bag, a roll of paper towels, clean it up with the paper towels, okay? Secondly, clean the area. Just get a mixture of water and some dish soap, not too much. Water and some dish soap. Cover the area with it with a sponge or an old washcloth. Just cover the area with the mixture of water and dish soap. Let it sit for a few minutes. And then come back to the area with a clean washcloth that's that's wet, a, a hand towel or a washcloth that's, that's dampened, and clean off the stain, okay? And um, let it sit for a few more, more minutes and then dry it off with a towel. And then disinfect and deodorize. Now, I highly recommend um, on my website a product called Nature's Miracle. I'm going to give you the link to it um, to disinfect and deodorize the area. It is guaranteed to remove the diarrhea stains from the carpet and also the odors from the carpet. Um, it even works well on old stains. If you have a cat that pees in the house or, or whatever, um, Nature's Miracle is considered an enzymatic cleaner. That means that it breaks down the compounds that cause the odor. Okay, so you're going to find some videos on my YouTube channel about how to um, clean dog and cat urine out of the carpet. And this is one of the um, products that I recommend because not only does it get rid of the stain, but it get, it breaks down the smell. And it's not just like, you know, you use those stupid, um, I think Resolve makes one where it's the powder that you put on your carpet and it deodorizes. No, it doesn't. Then all you've got is the smell of the poop plus flowers. Okay. It's disgusting. It, but they don't get rid of the smell. They just mask the smell and they don't do a very good job of it. So if you use the product like nature's miracle, it will break that break down what what's in pee and poop that causes the odor to begin with and get rid of it. Okay. It is not expensive. I'm going to give you the link um, in the article and in, in the description box to keep that on hand, which you should have that on hand if you have a pet um, anyway, because they do have occasional accidents and you want to get the smell out permanently. Okay. So, um, that will help you. And then when you're finished, step number four is to vacuum the carpet. Oh, I didn't realize. I forgot I put this in the article. Here's a link to um, one of the articles I was just telling you about how to remove dog and cat urine from the carpet. It is in this article, and I'll give you the link to it. Okay? Oh, we're all the way to the end. I hope that this has helped. Uh, knowing what to do to treat dog diarrhea is important for your pet's health. If your dog gets diarrhea, follow the guidelines here and always call your vet if you are concerned. Make sure the dog is taking in sufficient amounts of water to prevent dehydration and um, let them rest. Giving uh, your dog a healthy diet, a stable and loving home, and regular medical care is the best way to stop do dog diarrhea from occurring frequently. Um, feel free to comment below if you have additional information to share on this topic. If you have found things, um, maybe you know recommendations or ideas that your vet has given you over the years, please share the information if you would, please. Now, at the end of my article here, I have a silly little video of Cagney. This was uh, a video I made for my friend. Um, with Cagney eating healthy and feeling much better after a days long bout with diarrhea. It's a very silly, silly video, but I'm going to give it to you here and um, I'm going to give it to you in the description box. So I, I would like it if you would go ahead and do that. And if you would like to see some more cute Cagney videos, I'm giving you the link for that too. A couple more things before we go. Um, like I said, I am not a veterinarian. I, the information that I get uh, for my website, for my YouTube videos is from my own personal experience and from research that I do on these topics. I only go to credible sources and I list the sources for this particular article in here. So you can go there for more information about uh, this topic from the experts. So thanks so much for staying till the end of the video. I hope your little doggy feels better. Please comment in the um, comment box below and let me know what's going on with your little poocharoonie and uh, let us know how they're doing. Again, most important thing, when you're concerned, call the vet. Be careful that the dog doesn't get dehydrated. Um, 
go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Please give the video a like if you've made it this far. You must have seen it valuable. I would appreciate it so much. Please share this video in my website, peoplelovinganimals.com, with your friends and family members who have dogs and cats. It's full of tons and tons of valuable information. And um, some of the things on my website that I refer, products and um, services and all these sorts of things, I am an affiliate for not all of them, but some of them. And I will get a small commission if you use my links to purchase these things. And then I give 10% of that commission to animal charities. So for that reason as well, I really would appreciate it if you would um, share the website and share these videos because it's all about helping animals. So again, thank you so much. I hope your dog feels better soon. And uh, thanks again so much for visiting and watching my video. My name is Deborah, and my website is peoplelovinganimals.com. Thanks. Bye-bye.